Hello, this is what I was up to this week. Uh, the mouths and eyes got away from me a little bit, but uh, I've learned a lot, and I think I have some ideas for the future. I'll go into it after I do this little shop breakdown. And then a little tutorial, a super basic tutorial on how to stroke your characters if you don't know how to do this. And uh, here we go. No more random mode. No more trusting Rotten Tomatoes. We're going to have to do research of our own on movies. No more random mode. No more trusting Rotten Tomatoes. We're going to have to do research of our own on movies. No more random mode. No more trusting Rotten Tomatoes. We're going to have to do research of our own on movies. All right. So Jay's currently expressing my feelings towards uh, mouths right now. Um, I tried a different thing. The rotoscoping last time worked, but I just want to try something a little less uh, labor intensive. And while it didn't work, it did give me an idea. Going forward, when I do my thing, I'm going to um, isolate the mouth with lipstick. That's the easiest thing to do. It's like a easily to chroma key out and then I could layer that. So uh, that's the idea going forward and we'll see if it works. All right. Sometimes on these videos, I'm like, uh, man, I wish I had more outline on this guy. I wish I would have uh, drawn it with like heavier hand. So uh, there's a way to do that. Now there's many ways to stroke a character. I just find this super easy and effective. So uh, this is what I do. So as you see, this character is cut out like in that other video I did with rotoscoping for absinthe. So uh, you'll need to have done that. But yeah, we'll just throw a little uh, background in there so we can see this line pop. All right, so we're gonna press uh, Control or Command D to duplicate this uh, layer. And then we uh, don't really need to see this uh, layer in top. We're just working on the back one, so let's shut off the visibility. Now, if you're lazy like me, you just type fill and then uh, apply that to the, your layer. And now it'll fill this layer entirely with this default red, but we can change that to any color we want. So as you can see, it's perfectly behind our layer, so you can't even see it yet. Again, to change the color, all you have to do is uh, click this little swatch and then uh, pick whatever color you want. So it's perfectly behind our character and this doesn't help us yet. What we need to do is expand it. And so because I'm lazy again, I type in choker and we use simple choker. Now all choker does is it constricts your mat, but if you go in the opposite direction, it'll expand it. And this is exactly what we want. So let's turn on our top layer and uh, see what this effect does. As you pull it in the negative values, it'll expand. See, see the, the line around them now? Now I'm gonna set the fill color to black because that's the outline color of mine. And I just make it as thin or thick as I want now. So that's how it works. Uh, let's put it on an actual video now. All right, this was another experiment I did with a keyframe. I tried to apply a cutout effect on it and I overlaid that on my drawing. I do kind of like it, but it also feels a little bit too uh, filtery. It looks like too much like the real video with a filter on it, but I don't know. I still kind of like it and I still think it's kind of cool. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to duplicate it and then we're going to apply fill to it. Make sure it's on the bottom layer. Now let's apply the simple choker again. And there you go. It has an outline that perfectly moves with them. And you can fiddle with it and make it as uh, thick or thin as you want. And there you go. That's how I stroke my characters and uh, give it a little pop. All right, I hope somebody found some of this useful. Um, that's it.